Hello fellow traders, it's Edward with Crypto University and in this video we have an exciting lesson for you. We're going to be talking about the Smart Trade Terminal. So if you don't know how to access the Smart Trade Terminal, you can just simply pull over on the side tab and click Smart Trade. It'll bring you to the screen that we have here. And we've previously covered the Buy and Sell Terminal and we will cover these in future videos. This video will strictly be covering the Smart Trade section of the Smart Trade Terminal. Alright, so starting at the top. We have the exchange to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and choose from this one. We have the market that we want to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and choose USDT market. And then we can select a pair that we want to map our trade in. So depending upon what coin you're looking at trading for the day, you can choose your currency pair here. These are going to be recommended trading pairs that are powered by TradingView. You can turn those off here like we previously discussed in other videos, or you can look at them to help guide you in your trades. So if you scroll down, you'll see the candlestick chart powered by TradingView. And you have all the tools and timeframes that you normally would be able to access on TradingView. One of the most beautiful things about this is that you can actually compile multiple indicators onto this chart without having to pay for a pro TradingView subscription. Uh, but on the flip side of that, you don't get to run your private scripts. So if you have any private indicators, uh, like a lot of our students have Nitrous Bull, you won't be able to see it on this TradingView chart. You'll still have to externally use another TradingView. Uh, but like I said, it's beautiful on this one because you actually can get away with using multiple indicators without having to pay for a pro TradingView. So pros and cons I'm sorry if you've already bought nitrous bull go ahead and just look at it on your regular trading view app or on the website uh, and just use this one for everything else because you can full screen this and literally make all your observations right here um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it back to the candlesticks only so you can see here the order book is on the right side like you would normally see in your Binance trading display or whatever other exchange you might be trading on so this is where things get interesting. So right here you can map out how much BTC you'd want to buy. So if I wanted to buy 0 0.001 BTC, I would put that right there. If I wanted to buy it at market price right now, that's what I would press right here, market. If I wanted to press at limit price, then I would set what price I wanted to pay for it. So let's say I didn't want to buy that one BTC unless price of Bitcoin fell to 42,000. So then I would see that my buy order gets placed right here along the EMA. It's beautiful that you can actually see where your buy order ends up on the grid. So if I wanted to set that to 43.50, it would come up closer. You see how the buy price moves on the grid? It's beautiful. So you can also set a conditional market order, meaning that it will trigger when the price reaches the set level, right? So you delete the bid and the ask spread completely. So you do you can do a conditional limit order or you can do a conditional market order. And this will actually allow the trade to execute as soon as price hits this point. So as soon as price hits this, the order will be executed at market price. That's a conditional market order. That's usually what I use to trade. Um, there are different scenarios where I would use a limit or market order, and there are different fees for each scenario based upon what exchange you're using. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set a conditional market order for 43,500. And then we can see that here on the chart. So something that is beautiful about three commas is that you have the option to put trailing buy on. So if you put trailing buy and you have this on by a um, minuscule percentage, maybe 0.1, then what would happen here on the chart is if price went into this period of your buy of 43,500 and trailing buy would be activated. And once trailing buy is activated, if price steps away from this point, which we have indicated by 0.1%, in this direction upwards then it will obtain the buy order but if price continues to go below our conditional market buy order then we will wait to buy in for the peak of the dip this is an excellent tool if you time it right and if you know how to use it without wide spreads 
because then if price went from 43,500 all the way down to 42,000, right? Before it could come up and see that 0.1% difference that we have put in, then we actually wouldn't make a buy order until 42,000 or the the trading software wouldn't make a buy order until 42,000. So, we had mapped out to make our entry at 43,500 and with trailing buy, we actually bought at a lower price at 42,000. So trailing buy is an excellent tool to have. I usually set within very small ranges, like 0 0.05. That way I can make sure that I get in around my prediction times. Pretty much tried to be as accurate as possible with my predictions. So I set minuscule trailing buy uh, targets. That also helps to avoid a lot of the latency that you might experience in a volatile market. So trailing buy can be a blessing and a burden but that's how you would use it if you wanted to use it. So additionally, if you didn't want to press 0.01 BTC, let's say you would rather say, okay, I want to spend $500, then you would type 500 and it would adjust accordingly. So now instead of 0.01, we're getting the extra sats right here. Instead of just a 0.01 Bitcoin, we get 0.011495 because we went to $500 instead. So now we get to the exciting part and we get to determine where our take profit goal is. So as we can see right here, we have limit and market order. This will be placed on the exchange and order book beforehand. And this will be executed at market price. So you can go for bid, ask, or the last. The last will get you the market price, absolute market price. So you can determine at what percentage you want. So let's say we want to make about 2%. We can scroll up and see where our take profit target is on the chart by zooming in here from our buy price. So you can see 2% from our buy price wouldn't be that much. We could actually aim for much more, maybe up like 56,000. So from our buy price, we can measure here and see that we're in. We could, this trade could potentially, if you wanted to make a swing trade on this, you could potentially make up to 28%. But we're going to set multiple take profit targets so that way we can make profits along the way. So let's set our first one at 2%. That way we can make sure we get some money out of this. Let's add another take profit target. Simply press add. And let's make this one 5%. So let's scroll up and we can see now a new take profit target has been added for you. So if you were to buy here, if price continues to go in this direction and you accumulate shares here, and then price bounces back up to TP1, you make some money. If it hits the TP2, you make some more money. Now let's just let's just say that Bitcoin, we think Bitcoin is gonna go back up to 56,000. So we're gonna set some more take profit targets along the way. And here you can even choose how much of your capital you wanna put in at every step. So I just left it for 25% for each one cause I'm just gonna make four steps just for instructional purposes. 10% here, scroll up and you can see where TP3 would be. And then on the last one, we're gonna get a little bit ludicrous and we're gonna hope that we can make that 20% back on our last bit of coins. And we can see that we're getting it up here, which doesn't seem too unreasonable, honestly. So we're gonna go ahead and map that out and take profit target. One of the amazing features about three commas, remember how we had trailing buy over here to help you buy at the lowest price? Well, we have trailing take profit over here to help you sell at the highest price. So you want to keep this, again, pretty minuscule depending upon what your take profit conditions are. I usually like to keep it at 0.1. All right, so price continues to come in this direction. We Our buy order gets filled here. Then we hit take profit goal one, two, and three. Price continues to come up. It goes almost parabolic. So we continue to see higher price movements. Well, right there at our last take profit target, we would actually have enabled trailing take profit. So now trailing take profit is following this price movement. And if there's a rally, it will continue to be in the trade until the trailing take profit difference is met. So in other words, if the price continues to go up, your trade will remain active until price comes down for that drop off right there. And if we had a trailing take profit of 0.1%, once price experienced this dip right here and fell back below in a period of 0 0.01 as we had defined here, 
the trade would have been completed and you would have sold for that profit. Instead of cashing out at your last take profit goal of 20%, you stayed in the trade and followed the rally all the way up for a whopping 33%, right? Because price peaked here and then came back down and trailing take profit sold your trade for a profit. It's a wonderful tool to have on. Of course, it can be a blessing and a burden. If you don't know how to use it, if you're using it in an illiquid market, uh, you can lose out on latency and some of the volatility. So don't have wide spreads whenever you're using trailing buy or trailing take profit. And then finally, in the stop loss terminal, this is everyone's least favorite part. Nobody wants to plan for error, but it's best if you do, because if you fail to prepare, then you prepare to fail. So this is where you can manage your risk and determine how much you are willing to gamble on this trade. Same thing, you can do conditional limit or market order, and you can do bid, ask, or last. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this trailing take profit illustration. Now you can see here the, the stop loss is plotted in yellow. So you can see the stop loss portrayed on the chart now as a yellow line as 4% from our conditional market buy. Now some awesome features about the stop loss tool on three commas, you actually have a stop loss timeout. So if price falls below your stop loss for 100 seconds and stays below it for more than 100 seconds, then your stop loss will be triggered. So if price comes down here and it gets faked out, stays down here for a minute and then find support comes back over, then your trade stays alive. This can be a blessing and a burden because if you enable the 100 second for the stop loss timeout and then price continues to go down, well then you've spent another 100 seconds in dangerous territory. But it can be helpful because I know a lot of you have been stopped out of trades that in turn were winning. You set your stop loss right to support or resistance and then it was actually concurred after your trade was stopped out and became profitable. So this can help for those types of scenarios. Now, just like trailing buy and trailing take profit, we have trailing stop loss, except trailing stop loss is a little bit different. So it gets activated after the smart trade has bought the coins and after the smart cover has sold the coins. So it'll follow the price up, right? So let's just say, for example, the price of Bitcoin comes down here and hits your buy order. Then price comes up in the other direction and it becomes profitable and you go to take profit three, right? So right now we're at trailing, we're at take profit goal number three. So now trailing stop loss would move up and keep that 4% difference from the actual price rate. So price right now is at take profit goal three right here, right? So the stop loss would then move up to keep this distance that it has between the initial buy is 4%. This is what we have indicated right here, 4%. So this distance is 4%. So trailing stop loss would then enable the stop loss to come up and stay 4% behind the current price. So if price went through take profit one, two, and that is now at price number three, and instead of continuing to go upwards towards take profit goal four, it starts to become a losing trade well, our stop loss is right here, and so it meets, and you get stopped out for profits. So you took 25% profits here, as indicated by this. We took 25% of our investment capital profits at take profit one, take profit two, and at take profit three. So we had 25% of capital that we were holding on to still in the hopes that we would achieve take profit four. And now that trailing stop loss has enabled, once the price moves back in a negative direction trailing stop loss is there to save us so we sell the remaining 25 percent of our trade at a profit because we still are selling it higher than what we paid for it so this is how you can take advantage of all the amazing features of three commas let me just go ahead and delete this real quick all right so now that we've deleted all the mapping that we were using we can show you what the chart looks like so if you like the way that looks and you think that trade is going to work out for you, don't try to copy this trade because by the time you see this video, the market conditions will be different. Please do not put these inputs on for your trade. Your chart has to look good for you. That is the purpose of all these tools. You can see them beautifully portrayed on this chart so it can all make sense for you. And if you like the way it looks, go ahead and let that sucker ride and you can press create trade. 
you have one more opportunity to confirm or deny this is what you want to do so you can see the units you want to buy the price you want to pay for them the total you're going to spend for them the stop loss you have your timeout all your take profit goals and a note if you want to put one if you want to do that go ahead and press confirm I'll do so just so I can show you how it looks your smart trade is successfully created so I knew that we we're gonna be waiting for this to be opened so right now to show you the current position price in comparison to where your open price is you can monitor your active trade here it hasn't started doing anything yet everything is still pending so your options are a little bit different here you can still refresh instead of closing at market price since this trade is not open you can open now at market price and it would still keep all of these settings that you had just input it would keep them all except it would readjust everything to your new buy price so it wouldn't take two percent take profit from this price or ten percent take profit from this price it would now take it at the current market price so you can edit if you click edit it'll just take you back here so that you can edit the settings of that trade that we just made or you can cancel which I'm gonna go ahead and do now it'll cancel the three commas trade and cancel unfilled orders as I said previously it will not cancel any open orders or any orders that have been filled you'll need to close them at market price in order to do that so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this order and it's canceled that is a general rundown of how to use the smart trade terminal I know it was a little bit lengthy, but it is definitely necessary that you understand how to use this terminal right here. There's over 21 exchanges that can integrate right now, and I'm pretty sure that more will be added as time goes on. So it's literally your one-stop shop to manage all your trading activity. It's beautiful. I love it. I love Smart Trade Terminal, um, but that's enough out of me. Let's go ahead and get you guys out there and learn how to use this. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. I'll be more than happy to help you figure out how to understand this better. For now, I think you need to get out there and actually have some fun with it, practice, see how it actually works because you can listen to me talk about it all day, but until you get out there and play around with it for yourself, you're never truly going to understand it. So that's it for this one, guys. Have at it.